What is going on guys and welcome to my FM20 beta series, beta, whatever you want to call it, is going to be Chelsea. Now I know it's going to be a hard one, obviously Frank has just come into the job, but also we have a transfer ban, so we can't sign anyone for the entire first season. That is why I selected Chelsea, it's going to be an interesting challenge and one that I am looking forward to as you can see. Chelsea have today confirmed the appointment of me as the manager Pen to paper on a two-year deal with 130k. Very nice indeed. As there is, uh, as there isn't many signings and anything to go on, it's going to be a fairly quiet pre-season. So I'm just going to get through that as quickly as possible, and I will meet you on the first day of the season. So welcome back. It is the first game of the season, and uh, a very quick pre-season, fairly quiet. Let's uh, let's have a look at the pre-season fixtures. So we actually lost our first friendly against Spartak Moscow. I'll show you the tactic and everything in a minute, but since then, it's been pretty, uh, pretty bit of a formality, you would expect. We then beat CSKA, Little American Tour, where we beat Dallas, New York, Columbus, and finally, Atletico Pamplona. I haven't got the real name fixes or the badges or anything like that, as you can see, at this moment in time. I'll probably get that when the full game comes out. Um, but yeah, really good. Some of the performances, I think one of these, it might have even been this one, we had, uh, I can't see, there we go, match. yeah, 42 shots, and they didn't have a single shot. Um, yeah, I was going to say, Atletico Pamplona, I believe is Osasuna. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's a thing. Um, don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, first game of the Premier League season is at home at 2 Everton. I believe this follows real life fixtures, I'm not too sure. Um in terms of transfers, there was a little bit of business done. Right, look at this at the top as well. 155 million transfer budget and 900 grand of wages and we can't spend a penny of it. How cruel is that? I mean, I hope that bodes well for next summer, but yeah, that's just not fair. Um, we have made one sale, if I can find it. Bloody hell. Uh, here we go. So here's the ones that I've done. Ross Barkley has gone to Man United for £37 million. I'm not playing an attacking midfielder, and in the central midfield role, there's better options than him. Uh, it's as simple as that. And, uh, yeah, I know, obviously, we can't sign players, so the depth would have been good, but he would have just not played that much and been complaining, so I'd rather just get him out now. Um, and, yeah, I mean... There we are. He's gone to a big rival. We got a lot of money for him. And a few youngsters have gone out on loan. Um, a typical Chelsea fashion, really. One thing that I noticed as well, the club vision, that was one of the things that hits you straight away. This screen is obviously new for this game. Um, yeah, this the, I when I saw it, I was just like, what is this? I don't think I'd seen it in any of the preview videos for FM20. But this screen is actually like I really like the screen as it, it just breaks down everything love the five year plan bit for the club I knew there was like a five year plan fit for players I didn't realise there was actually for the club as well Um, so the club culture everything like it, it tells you and it tells you level of importance as well so I have to play attacking football Um, they want me to sign players under 22 one of the things here sign young players to develop for profit so they just continue in the typical Chelsea way uh, their whole Chelsea thing about only offering one-year contracts for players over 30. Just, yeah, it's, it's so in-depth and brilliant. Um, but expectations, so this is where, you know, this is this season. So they want us to um, reach the quarterfinal of the Champions League, which might be quite tough, but, you know, Chelsea in real life are doing so much better than anyone thought. So, um, yeah, that, yeah, it would be quite hard to live up to that, I think. Super Cup, not important. We love that. I think we'll play that next episode. They want us to qualify for the Champions League for the league again before the season started. You would have said that would have been tough, but actually, potentially not. Reach the FA Cup final as a minimum is quite tough. Uh, don't care for the uh, Carabao Cup. And then the, the the end of the future season. So the end of next season, they want us to challenge and my contract comes to an end. I like that. Uh, season after, challenge for the title. And then again. So yeah, really liking the screen and um, yeah, just... What just you know another new feature for FM? Uh, in terms of I've shown you transfers expectations. I guess only left to show you the tactic really. Before I do that, I, just, I wanted to address why I've done this save. So I, 
I may well be wrong, but as far as I can tell, I haven't seen many, if any, people doing a Chelsea fate, save for the beta. It is the transfer ban that drew me in. Now, I debated whether to do it or not. And actually, initially, I wasn't going to. Um, as some of the fellow, uh, some of the admins in the FM Creators Discord will vouch, I posted a thumbnail in there. I was going to do United because um, signing players is a massive part of FM, and it brings you know one of the biggest bits of enjoyment. Especially if I'd have been able to spend some of that 150 million. Um, but actually, not being able to sign players this kind of creates a bit of a youth challenge. Now, obviously. You know, Chelsea have got plenty of older heads in the dressing room, but actually, a lot of that squad is still young. I mean, how like all these players? Let's just get it up on the keyboard. Um, Sixteen of a twenty-five man squad are twenty-five or younger. So, yeah, it's um, it's certainly going to be. I was going to call it "You Don't Win Anything with Kids," but there's not. You know, I wasn't sure. So it's just going to be a let's play. Uh, let me run you through the squad quickly. Um, as you would expect, Kepa and Caballero are going to be our keepers. Uh, in terms of centre-halves, Zuma, Rudiger, Christensen, Tamori, James and, uh, James and Dave, or uh, as Pelicueta, <laughs> right-backs, Emerson, Alonso, left-backs. This guy, he's coming in as depth in defensive midfield because he's a natural there. He's got a little bit of potential about him. And actually, in pre-season, he's been so good. Never even heard of this guy. But I just thought I'd give him a run in pre-season. Um, as you can see, wanted by so many people. So he's obviously got something about him. Yeah, he's been fantastic. Obviously, you've got the like Kovacic, Jorginho, Kante, Loftus Cheek will be there. He's going to be out for a while. Uh, Mount as well. Winger wise, we've got, obviously got William. Pulisic is out injured. I'll talk about Pedro in a sec. Hudson Odoi is still out injured. Pedro, he came to me and said he was homesick, um, which is really not what I needed because obviously we don't want to sell that many players. Um, but yeah, he's told me he's homesick, so I've sent him home for a month to see if he'll be all right. But it's really not an ideal situation, especially considering you know two of our other wingers are out injured, and one of them is a 16 year old kid. Again, someone I just brought in. I thought I'd give him a run. He's like the best natural left sided player in the reserve teams, and obviously, yeah, he's not he's not been brilliant. He's been okay, but not fantastic. Um, and then the three strikers: Sharu, Abraham, Batshuayi. Giroud is the one I've been favouring in pre-season. Um, he's played really well. They all have, to be fair, they've all scored goals. So it's going to be interesting going forward. Uh, looking at the tactic ahead of the game. It's going for a Gagan press style. Now, you know, if you watch La Resurrection, you know, 4-2-3-1, control possession, just that was it. Um, but yeah, this year I'm actually going to opt for something a little bit different. In the beta save last year, I used a 4-3-3 or 4-1-4-1. I did use a control possession style that time, but I feel like with Chelsea's players, especially Kante, um, doing a Gagan press may suit them. And because they're younger, they're genuinely a younger team. They should have a lot of energy. Um, so I've, ch I've changed some of the some of the roles, and everything. Um, so I'll go through the team and just explain. So Kepa's going to be in goal. Um, fairly straightforward choice. Aspilicueta, Rudiger, Christensen and Emerson are going to be my back four. That's the default roles uh, for for the Gagan Press system and I'm not going to change that. Jorginho is going to be in the base of midfield. Deep line playmaker, just hot, sitting, in, sitting in his position, doing Jorginho things. And um, yeah, just I think he will uh, be a really instrumental part to our season. Kante and Kovacic in the box to box and Carolera roles. I know Kante is a, like natural in the box to box role, but again, I think these two having these two shuttling rather than anything else is probably the best to have it. And Kovacic is in a brilliant Carolero, so having them like that, similar ability. And Kante has been performing just fine in a Carolero role, so we may change it around. But for now, this is what I'm going with. Willian has only played one preseason game. I think there must have been. He was on holiday, so I'm guessing there was a uh, Copper America or something. I'm guessing went with Brazil. Uh, so yeah, he's only had one preseason game. Mason Mount has um, hasn't played too much. He was on late holiday as well because he was at the Under Twenty One Championships in the summer. He's going to start today on the left. Uh, he hasn't played there at all yet. He's been playing central midfield in this system. 
Um, but yeah, just with the lack of options, I'm going to put Mount out there. And Olivier Giroud is going to play up front for me. And of course, we have to have a target, man. Uh, but yeah, he's been playing really well. So yeah, that is the team. Blue is the colour. I, I had to get that in, sorry. He don't even support Chelsea. Um, yeah, let's see how the first game of the season goes. We are at home to Everton, so hopefully we can grab a win. Interestingly, Everton opting for a 3 or 5 3 2, 3 5 2. Moyes Keen up top. Just having a look as well. I didn't really pay much attention to sign ins, obviously, because we didn't make any, but I uh, no, I just noticed there. They've got Javier Pastore on the bench. Um, I think one sign in that was noteworthy is Liverpool signed Lautaro Martinez from Inter Milan, so that's um, that's going to be an interesting uh, interesting signing for them. I did replace Jody Morris as well, as as that may upset any Chelsea fans watching, but his stats aren't great. So we've got this Bulgarian guy in, Sanko Svetanov. He's very good. I mean, he's got a great name. He's very good at what he does. What more could you ask for? Well, let's. Let's say we'll give the fans what they want. They don't care. I've noticed that in pre-season that these players really don't respond to me yet. And Golo loves it though, to be fair to him. Here we go. So we are going to carry on in 2D because 2D is my preferred thing. But 3D replays are going to be a thing as we press forward. I haven't even been watching the game. Giroud picks up the ball on the edge, floats it. Emerson. Hit oh my word. I can't wait to watch that in three dimensions. What a strike from Emerson, his first goal. It might well be his first Chelsea goal, but here we see Giroud picks it up. It just seems to be going nowhere, but long ball back. Does he hit it on the volley? Please say, oh my word. Drills it into the bottom corner. What a goal, a minute in, or inside a minute, and Emerson bags. Absolute scenes. And uh, we win possession again. I'm just sorry. I just oh no, Moise Keane robs from Christensen and Jesus. Two minutes in, it's already one-one. Not Christensen's best work there, has to be said. Emerson plays the ball back to him, and I'm guessing it's just a loose touch. I oh, know he just he's just so hesitant. Moise Keane so rapid. Kepa doesn't move. A great finish, and well, just as just as we were getting excited for the start of this game, it's been. Um, been pegged back a little bit, and we start with a throw in deep in our own half. Jorginho back to Dave, who launches one upfield. Zuri collects nicely. Kante, great ball out to Mount. He's isolated though, he hasn't got many options. Gets a ball in. William is there and heads just over the bar. I've noticed that as well in one one thing in our play. We play a lot of long balls forward. I will admit, but they go. They don't just go straight. Like that, lots of diagonal balls, and it's actually really effective. Mount hits a post, draws a save from the rebound from Jordan Pickford. Mount having a really good early display so far. Now Everton pick up the ball in the middle of midfield, but Christensen makes a good tackle. Come forward, Giroud. Oh, he's through there. You'd think, oh, he's offside anyway. I've just noticed Michael Keane is on the uh, is on the other team. Brings back Malaga memories. And now William has the ball on the right side. Giroud! Oh, Rockets went off the bar. And William wins the corner. We deserve to be ahead in this game. Kovacic, Jorginho at the back stick. Giroud didn't need to touch it. It was going in. Oh, Olivier, you absolute fool. We would have been winning. Anyway, it does come to half time. Entertaining first half. But I'm going to say to the boys that I'm disappointed because we should be winning this game. Kante has taken a knock and actually I think I'm going to take him off. Let's bring on uh, Clinton. I'm going to drop him back. We'll make him... This is what I've been doing. Playing Jorginho further forward. Keep him there. Have Mola as a ball wing midfielder. And we, Jesus... Ball floated in, Dave heads away, and Mount can get on it, and we can launch a counter attack. Or oh, maybe not. He loses that. Oh no, he wins it back from Coleman. Spreads a nice ball out wide to Willian. Can he get it in? Lots of players forward. Rudiger mops up Andre Gomez, and now Everton launched the counter, and Lloyd Moyes Keane is in. Can he get a ball across? He doesn't. His cross is poor. Mount, good tackle. That gives it away. Andre Gomez. Up to Moyes, Keane, Richarlison. Everton knocking it about nicely. And Coleman's free on his right-hand side. Davis, lovely switch of plays to Digne. Cuts it back. Sigurdsson, back to Digne. But his touch is loose and we get it. And now we can break. Zerud, lovely ball. And Mason Mount is in. 
Oh, great save. William, can he get on the loose one? He does, but his shot is wide. What a, what a chance that was for Mount Corner. Kovacic whips it in. Giroud gets on the end of it and hits the bar again. And now we lose out and Everton clear. How many times Tammy Abraham is on for Mason Mount? But Tammy's going to play on that left-hand side for now. Jorginho could ball out to Emerson. He drills one again and Emerson scores another beauty. I apologise if that was loud for anyone listening with headphones. What a strike, Emerson. Two superb strikes in this game. Did not think I'd be relying on the left back. A lovely ball out by Jorginho. 25, 30 yards out probably. Beats Pickford at his near post. What a strike from Emerson. He's put us in control. Please don't peg us back immediately, just like he did in the first half. Ball out towards Coleman, but that man Emerson intercepts. Abraham crossfield. Finds Giroud. Can he play Jorginho in? Instead, he finds Abraham. Emerson, left-hand side. Can he get a ball in? He does. Headed away by Digne. And there's a great tackle by Mola. He's in. Can it be? Oh, great save. Abraham is there. And on the rebound, Sammy Abraham makes it 3-1. The substitute gets himself on the score sheet. Great play by Clinton Mola. That, remember that name, people. Look at that for a tackle. And another one as well. Puts himself in. Admittedly, not the best finisher. You think the save from Pickford is good, but Tammy's so quick to get there, still with an angle to finish, and he does exactly that. And I think that may just about wrap the game up. Just going to focus down that right-hand side. Actually, no, do you know what? We'll play down the middle. I normally, whenever I do this, I just go with whoever's got bookings in their defence. As you can see, Michael Keane, he's now moving all over the shop. So we just follow him. I just try and get any advantage you can by getting people sent off. But I've been fussing around with that and not making substitutions. Some of these players are knackered. And I've noticed as well, you don't get the uh, the, the little highlight at the start or the end of a game now. If that's it, that's it. And there we go. The game finishes 3-1, but it was all about Emerson. Well done, boys. Superb win. We definitely deserved it. Achievement unlocked. First victory. But that man, Emerson. Two absolutely unbelievable strikes. What a way to start this Let's Play series. And I'm very much looking forward to it. The next episode will be a double header. We will have the Super Cup and then we will play Watford. Uh, and yeah, I'm just I'm looking forward to how this pans out. I certainly didn't think it would go. I'd be excited for it after I, we lost that friendly to Spartak. But there you go. Anyway, that is going to be the end of today's episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, pop a like on there for me. Subscribe to the channel. Can we get to 100 by the end of the year? Now that FM20 is out, I sure hope so. Link has over in the description to the FM Creators Discord. And I will see you for episode two.